Live from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE on the ground. Covering KubeCon 2016. Brought to you by the Linux Foundation and Red Hat. Here's your host, John Furrier. Hello everyone, we are here live in Seattle for KubeCon, CloudNativeCon. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, special on the ground coverage, and uh, we're here with Red Hat, Cheyenne Saha, who's the head of product at Red Hat at Cluster Storage. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, John. Uh, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, so we storage is all the action is. I yeah. In 2010, we started theCUBE, I said to Dave Vellante, storage is sexy again, because it used to be called snorage, because it was <laughs> like really boring. But really, since 2010, even till now, storage has been the center of the disruption. Mm -hmm. Big data, cloud, there's so much action going mm -hmm. on. More storage than servers, converged infrastructure, all these appliances, Nutanix mm -hmm. goes public. So certainly a lot of action. Right. More than ever, it affects the platform as a service layer. It affects what customers do because that's where their crown jewels are stored, mm -hmm. the database. Mm -hmm. Among other things, unstructured data as well. Your thoughts on where this industry is going and what Kubernetes and, and containers do it. You guys have container native stuff. Mm -hmm. What's the update? Give us the state of the art Red Hat story. Yeah, I mean, what we have seen so far is uh, software defined storage has uh, actually crossed the chasm. You know, uh, Gartner uh, rated Red Hat as a uh, visionary in, uh, for distributed file systems and object storage a few weeks ago, but um, where we are seeing more is uh, traditional, uh, uh, the, when we started on this journey a few years back, uh, it was all about a cost play. You know, software defined storage was more like a cost play, uh, but it has changed in the last se several years, more becoming of an innovation play, and what's helping are this new kind of workload, some of these, you know, like container storage, where uh, software defined storage is a much better uh, option uh, compared to the traditional storage platforms or appliances out there. In Red Hat Gluster, we have added a series of innovations for the last several years, you know, including adding major features as well as enabling it to run in different kinds of environments, including inside a container, as well as public cloud, etc., so that you can have a stor consistent storage platform across you know, the hybrid cloud. So um, in addition to that, we have tightly integrated with Kubernetes and have storage drivers for Gluster and other products. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's moving along pretty fast. So it's, uh, my key word here is um, customers need modern storage for their modern workloads. And, you know, we see that happening. I always get fascinated by the Gartner quotes because how can Gartner have a magic quadrant when we have a horizontally scalable cloud market? There's like all the quadrants get mingled in because you think about it, storage, yeah. the leaders are the old guys. So how do they, they got to start rethinking their quadrants, just little uh, <laughs> pontification on Gartner and their magic quadrants, as you know, I'm so, you know, so passionate about it because the cloud world isn't about pure play specific point solutions. Mm -hmm. There's an integration game going on. Right. So you guys have to deal with a new mindset of the developer, right? Uh, management tools and development tools at the same time satisfy the storage infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So with that, how are you guys different from NAS appliances that yeah. are out there? Because that's what customers have. They just roll out the stack and rack the storage, mm -hmm. but the tools and software may not be in the language that the, right. the DevOps guys want. How yeah. do you guys solve that problem? Uh, the key, three key things that we want to stress that are key differentiators. One is flexibility. Second is programmability, and third is it's a fully featured storage platform. When you talk about flexibility, you know we we spend a lot of time uh, working with Gluster to make it work inside a container. So you can actually download a, a Gluster uh, container from the Red Hat registry and run, you know, which serves out storage just like other, you know, um, and provides storage services um, like application containers, which does application. Uh, number two is programmability. So we have uh, worked on features uh, for Gluster so that it it makes it really easy to allocate storage volumes from, from cluster. From a developer standpoint. From a developer standpoint, so that developers can simply request X amount of storage and get it from cluster, and all of the black magic that needs to happen behind the scenes actually happens without they worrying about, well, do I need to go to my storage admin to ask them to carve out a LUN for this or a volume, or if I do that, how long it will take them. We've taken all of the guesswork out. You know, They want storage, they ask for it, we allocate, they get it, you know, so so that's the thing. The other, the last thing, but not the least, is Gluster is a mature storage product. It's been, a, been around for a while. It has a whole set of, a uh, full set of enterprise grade class features, which includes things like snapshotting, cloning, you know, uh, erasure coding, tiering, the things that you'll expect from a mature storage platform. So it's not a stripped down storage platform, which is working with Kubernetes and containers that was just built for it. It's a fully fledged, full-fledged, fully-featured storage platform, which is also flexible and programmable. 
And the main benefit for the customers is what? Main benefit for the customers in, in the developer world is uh, the way we're looking at is it increases developer productivity because basically you, as a developer, you don't need to worry about or you don't, you, you don't want to get slowed down when you need some storage and, and so they can program storage as a service. So program so yeah. Basically, whenever they need it, they get it. Whenever they don't need it, they get rid of it. It gets it back into the pool, and then somebody else can use it. So that's very efficient usage of storage. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting you see the the creativity with containers and how people are using it with microservices. So you know, microservices is just a service. Storage could be a service. You guys have the cloud native storage, mm -hmm. which is essentially a container around the storage. Yeah. Which is super smart because it's just another container that can be managed as a service. Right. Which really flexes well from a developer standpoint yeah. relative to what's going on in the environment. Exactly. What's that plans for that with OpenShift? How does that fit into, yeah. like, say, OpenShift? So what we have done is uh, we have a product or a solution that we call Container Native Storage. We, we basically have built a Gluster inside a container. So we have a Docker image for Gluster that you can run inside the OpenShift platform itself, which means is, you run storage containers alongside application containers. They run in the same cluster, are managed by Kubernetes, upgraded using Kubernetes, managed using the same uh, pane of glass. So, so you don't have to deal with a storage appliance sitting on the side, which you have to manage separately. All of it gets provisioned, deployed, and upgraded um, you know, in the same way that you do application containers. And you don't have to deploy storage in every host inside the cluster. You can choose a set of nodes where you have a lot of disks and say, I'm, I'm going to run my storage container only on this disk, and I'm going to run applications on every, everything else, or I'm going to co-locate. So you have all the flexibility using Kubernetes to be able to do that. So if you don't want to mix storage and uh, app because you have concerns on performance, you can keep them separate. If you think that, you know, um, your app containers and storage containers can run together because your app containers apps are not demanding. You can co-locate, or you know, it's totally up to you know how you want to do. So it. there's a separation between the storage guys, the old world of yeah. rack and stack storage, and the developers. So you have some flexibility with containers. Does that change the life of the storage guy? Well, they still yes. Got to provision uh, storage. I mean, standard. They, they do have to do some initial provisioning, but after that, they don't have to necessarily, you know, um, babysit that environment forever. Um, you know, they once they set this up and let it go, uh, Gluster will allocate the storage volumes as needed, when needed, and deallocate them when people don't need them. So they go go back and yeah. So it's it's a, it's a pretty much a set and forget. Let the developers do their thing. Don't stand in their way. You know? And then more resources come in. So I got to get the question on the roadmap. Since you're mm -hmm. running product at a product mm -hmm. management yeah. cluster storage, Red Hat, I got to get the what's mm -hmm. next. I mean, what's the big uh, feature that you guys are building? The yeah. best product improvement. Can you share some color around the roadmap? What's next? The hottest so, thing. Um, yeah. So uh, for the last year or so, what we have been working on is. Uh, we initially, uh, you know, shipped Gluster with uh, Red Hat Gluster Storage as a, as a backend for OpenShift uh, back, you know, November of last year, where Gluster used to run in a separate cluster, which still supported the configuration. We call it dedicated storage or container-ready storage. In March of this year, we actually went and containerized Gluster, and we, we ran it, we tested it, and it worked very well. In the summer of this year, we went and completely, you know, basically started, uh, we, we GA'd our container native storage solution where we run Gluster inside OpenShift and manage it using Kubernetes. Uh, so that that is now available, generally available. And going forward in a couple of months, in a, actually a month from now, uh, we're going to add dynamic provisioning where you know uh, the developers are going to be able to simply ask for storage in Kubernetes terminology. It's like um, um, a claim will come in with X amount of storage, say 100 gigs, and we'll allocate it and give it to them all happening without admin intervention. So right now, uh, we use static provisioning, but it's going to go all dynamic provisioning. So dynamic is what everyone yeah. wants. Yeah. That's the big feature. So that's that's the big feature coming, and then rolling into you know next year, we're also looking at very tightly integrating Gluster inside OpenShift, so we'll be using more and more uh, OpenShift services like logging, monitoring, and we might also use Gluster as a backend for some of the things uh, that OpenShift needs for, for storage. So, so there's a lot of exciting things that are going to happen in the next six 
next to eight months. You know, and real thinking. quick, I know we're getting this the signal here, but yeah. I want you to share yeah. what's happening at this event, Cloud Native Con mm -hmm. and KubeCon kind of coming together because mm -hmm. KubeCon Kubernetes is only one feature of this mm -hmm. ecosystem that's developing. What is the big f uh, thing that's happening at this show that you can say is uh, hot for people to pay attention to? I think the biggest uh, biggest thing that's happening in this show that's hot for people to pay attention to is how. Uh, enterprises are adopting Kubernetes. You know, they they are describing their journey that this is how we started. You know, in 2014, and here we are. And there's a lot of learnings that uh, people can uh, gather from them. Like there's a lot of people who, who who start first, and then there are a lot of people who follow really quickly. I mean, there's a lot of learnings uh, that people can take. You know, you know what people are doing for logging, what are they doing for monitoring, what are they doing for persistent storage. You know, there's a lot to learn from the the innovators or the who have adopted Kubernetes right away. I think that's a big thing. So I'm trying to go at least to the talks where all the enterprises are coming, telling our Kubernetes journey. You know, that's that's pretty. And then good. the operationalize is the big challenge, and we heard that from the Red Hat. Well, more yeah. on that coming later. You're here watching the Cube at CubeCon, Cloud Native Con. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.